Hey everyone, it's Joe Lines, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jack, you're here from Copenhagen, Denmark. So um, it's funny, Jack and I, we, you know, before we have our, our weekly call where we record it, we always talk about what we've been working on and stuff. And um, I, I was going to demonstrate to him what I had done in my goal. And then I realized, you know what, let's, let's have this as one of our calls. So um, let me back up a step before I explain what I did, though. And how it came about, which is where I was just starting with Jackie, was um, I, I play with, you know, I, I often look at different APIs and um, from companies and um, or sometimes it's just from a browser and I try to detect the traffic. Um, either way, uh, but, but more so with the APIs documentation, you'll go in and you'll say like, let's say it's um, the Google Calendar API for, for working with their calendar. And of course, every API source, generally speaking, they give you three or four, maybe even five examples of how to work with their API. And it's usually in like Python, maybe C sharp, um, um, Java, not JavaScript, JSON, yeah, JavaScript, um, in, uh, in often curl. I have never, and correct me if you, if you've had it, Jackie, I have never seen an example for auto hotkey, right? No, no, yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. Or even just like a win HTTP request. I think I might've seen one years ago for the basic, HTTP type traffic, um, which was really easy to follow. But yeah, mo most of it has been on Microsoft's, uh, just them explaining the actual functionality of the com object or something, but gotcha. nothing really in depth. No. So, yeah. So um, what, what I've been doing is use, like I said, curl is one of those, what I don't like about like the Python examples um, is, and Ruby is another one I'll see a lot. They, they say, oh, here's the SDK or here's a library you use with our call. And so then you have to go learn the library and everything yeah. as well to, to, to dissect it. And it's just a pain because they're all different. Mm -hmm. um, so what I usually do is I look at the curl command and I start trying to replicate the curl command in auto hotkey. Unfortunately, um, it's, not, it's not like when you look at VBA code, and, and adapt it to auto hockey, boy, it's, it's a lot different, right? Yeah. Um, it, it's not similar, you know, I'm not gonna say at all, but you can figure it out, but boy, it takes some work. And then um, it dawned on me, um, you know, it'd be really cool is if I could actually download curl and, cause it's a command line tool that's been around, I think since like the seventies or eighties or something, right? It's been around for a long time. Um, what if I was to download curl, take the example they give me turn on Fiddler, which is what we have here in the background, run the curl command, and then I can look at the, the HTTP traffic. And from that, I could easily look at it and say, how do I adapt this into auto hotkey syntax? Um, and then I was like, well, wait a minute. You know, if I had, if I had this up here, it's very easy for me to, to look at this and to write a script to, in, to, to take the traffic and write the auto hockey syntax needed to generate that traffic, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I worked on. I think it was Sunday. I was playing, or maybe it was Saturday. I don't know. But I can look at any traffic. Let's, oh, here's an interesting one. So ephemeral. So these just disappear anyway. This is from Push Bullet. I was mentioning to Jackie. Um, mm. So I'm going to, I'm going to run my hot, uh, hit my hot key. That's actually just a message box I have that remind me I need to URI and code the payload. Um, but it went and it looked at the output and generated my, my syntax, which I haven't quite decided yet. I might put this into a GUI and have it where I can just hit the button and run it instead of displaying it and then putting it in something. But um, for now, I would just copy this and paste it into a uh, uh, um, like studio and then I can write it. So the, that I was pretty excited about. So the other one, which I mentioned was sometimes, well, actually I was doing it earlier here with Hangouts. I was trying to figure out how to, how to send a text from Hangouts, but using an API call instead of using the, the browser interface. And so um, I went in, you know, I turned on Fiddler and I went into Hangouts and I typed my message and I was looking at the traffic and then I could just highlight the traffic, hit the button and bam, I have an example template. Um, of what it is. So, uh, so that's what I was working on. Um, I, overall, I can see it being really helpful. If I can get it down, especially if I get it down to where 
auto hotkey actually let's say you highlight the curl code from the browser and you hit a button and it rips it puts it into the curl executes the curl you know and then you could see it on the screen and probably i'd still say i don't think it's worth well maybe we could maybe we could automate this to look at because here you can see the process that was done by maybe we could um look for the curl latest curl command and automate grabbing it from there but to me it's not worth the extra effort right i'd just rather see it highlight it and then have my syntax yeah as as a first step or or see how much you will end up using it or whatever just like with almost any automation you make where you slowly build onto it if you keep seeing something low-hanging fruit or something where you're thinking oh it would be nice if it grab the next call it did or whatever yeah. it could be right so yeah as as a uh, the manual part of it selecting which one to do is probably a good starting point yeah, yeah. incidentally um it was pretty cool in this i was and i didn't actually end up looking for it i was wondering if fiddler had a calm object behind it i thought maybe it does but i i, I said you know i wonder if there's anything in the menus and sure enough under menu copy this session, this control shift S, which you could, have, but, but I use the, what's it called? When get menu item. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And, um, and so this, let me bring it into, um, site. So this is the traffic that you saw. It grabs that for that thing that what, what I didn't like about this was it actually gets, let me, let me bring this back here. Um, Oh darn! It's not a good example, but it it um it gives you both the what was sent and what was returned. Mm. So here is starting down here. This is what was actually returned. Yeah. Um, and if there's a payload, it happens in somewhere in here, and I can I can do a different one if you want. To, we can see it. Um, it was just one of those things. Like let's see a post request here, and actually we can see this. This is and I don't know why. Usually there's not that many line breaks. Usually it's just one. Um, let me see if there's a different post. There we go. And now that actually looks encoded. Um, there's a payload that's encoded. So of course I probably couldn't do anything with that really. Um, at least I can't change it well, but um, yeah, it, it, it gets both the, um, the, what was sent and what was received. And so I had to use some logic, which I don't really like doing. I didn't, I didn't have a way cause there's nothing labeled. There's nothing that says payload. There's nothing that says, you know, whatever. So um, it gets the, uh, the the type of call which actually i don't even let me let me do a different one let me get that one oh but i should have i should have sorry what i wanted to do was to let me get back to which one what, what one was i on it wasn't that one maybe it was this one it was that one yeah control shift s i think and now there we go Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it looks well nice in the very first thing that's the type the call type yeah and then here's the URL. then they always have this so i just stripped that out but i i don't you know it, it's weird to me to have that in there but um i get it to the first white space um after the first part and that's the url and then i this is the one i and actually i have a it should work in here i have a hot string or a hot key oops did not mean to do that let me duplicate the whole line what I, I can do is here, and let me get rid of this part just so we can break it down. I use this one a lot too, is I can highlight it and hit Alt D. Oops. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that breaks up the, the key value pairs, right? So the first yeah. question mark is where do you start at? And then this is the, the key value for client equals Google Chrome. And that's obviously URI encoded because that plus there was a space probably. Uh, uh. Um, and the client ID, Right, this next key value pair, um, and you can see them down here too. But it, it what what's cool is in my example here. That's what you'll see up up in here if I had actually run it on this one, which apparently I I didn't. Um, so let me go back into here. It's weird. I can't. Re oh oh, that's why because it's scrolling. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. I I know there's a way to turn that off, but um, anyway, you get the idea, right? It um. Okay it parses that URL for you, 
which is is handy because because then experimenting is super easy you know exactly oh here's the key and i can change this value and update it and see if it changes um, which is also one of the other things i like to do is to take it from here drag it into composer yeah uh, and you can look at the stuff and make a little tweak and then hit execute and see if it works and i do all that usually before i start writing my syntax right i just say hey let me leverage that fiddler has can easily du duplicate the traffic let me drag it in here, make the tweak here. Oh, if it works, then I start bringing it into auto hotkey. And that's where I used to come in here and go, Oh, here's a header. I got to add. Here's a header. I got to add here, you know, and it's yeah. just, uh, it's time consuming. It's not terrible, but it does take time. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the exact, it, it's, it's a time server, if nothing else, right. Just because I, I would do the same thing. I, I might even think, Oh, do I need that one? Because it would take time to add it. Right. And right. by simply uh, grabbing all of them and, and yep. just having them there, the chance of it working the same as pressing execute is just that much higher. Yep. Because so, I, yeah, I was talking, um, Tank actually was over the other day and we were talking, I showed it to him and he's like, yeah, like this, this, I actually looked this one up. This DNT is a do not track from a browser. So technically you shouldn't need to have that one. Um, yeah. and, and I knew there was one, that's the length, um, which I haven't done yet, but somewhere in here is the, the length, which, mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't send because your length might change and, and it, you don't want to do that. It'll no, and, and, and you have it on, on the one in Fiddler right now, you have yeah. the length there. Right. Uh, so, so yeah. And, and as you said yourself, it will automatically right. do it anyway. Yeah. That, that was the other thing I did as I alphabetized them. Um, mm -hmm. So it's easier to find what you're looking for. Um, I yeah. would have maybe I did block out the content length because it should have been here. Um, but what I was thinking about, to your point, Jackie, so let me think about it, was what I'll probably do is look for specific ones, and I will I will still bring them in, but this is how they'll come in, right? They'll come out, yeah. in, comment it out, and then it's easy to just, I have it, I can enable, disable, um, in, in troubleshoot because usually you don't need all the headers that you see in the traffic, especially if you're practicing from a browser, right? It's got a lot of extra stuff. Yeah. And from, from what it seems, uh, I'm not sure if Fiddler's even showing you all the headers it's using, or if it's just sending the ones that are always default without even showing you in the composer. I don't know. Boy, I, I hope it's all of them, but yeah, I understand your. It, it should be all of them, of course, but it's just, if if you use your hotkey and, and get it using the menu yep. and it's giving you a raw format, it, it might add a header or two that, that is always there anyway. There there oh. won't be no need to change perhaps. Yeah. Just a guess. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, I thought that was a it's a it was a fun, cool thing that um just popped in my head after a bit. And I'm like, you know what, why? And this is, Jackie, we've talked about this a lot, right? I, I, I work with Fiddler a lot and I don't know why it never dawned on me to automate, you know, looking at the traffic and automate writing that syntax for me mm. um, until just the other day. I'm like, well, wait a minute, you know, this is the whole, I like the idea of doing the curl example because then I can easily pick up on new APIs. But even if I don't do that, the whole replicating web traffic um, and just, you know, cranking it out so quickly. It, it's, I'm going to use this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Fiddler and, or just the knowledge of the HTTP calls and stuff uh, on the back end. that it, it's something really, really worth uh, learning if, if you want to automate, uh, <laughs> stuff from your client to, to the internet. Yeah, which the the other one I had considered, and I haven't. I, I I'm curious if you have any thoughts on it. Was I thought maybe I'll make I'll have two hotkeys, or maybe I'll just have it do both at the same time. But it'd be also probably smart to write the what's the other one? The XML um, com object XML. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the the uh, request thing. I I don't remember the the right yeah. term right now either. But I do know which one you're thinking of. Yeah, so here's my syntax writer. Here is my MS XML. Yeah. 
Um, so, so this one, the great thing about this comm object is it will leverage your IE cookies mm -hmm. and a couple other settings. Um, so you don't have to, you'll, you'll have far less headers that you need. And, and Jackie, you actually taught me, which I think I have in here in my writer now, is um, set options, what I have in here. Um, or maybe that's in my, no, that should be here. There was a way you showed me, and maybe I didn't add it yet, but I really should, to borrow from the page you're on, to connect to the actual literal IE window you're on and send the, the request, the API call from that browser window. Yeah. Yeah, and that is just freaking beautiful because um, I don't know if I told you this. I ran into one the other day I was doing, and I was using this um, XML HTTP request, and it it didn't work. Um, and so then I switched over to what you showed me with using connecting to the window, and that actually didn't work until I still looked at the Fiddler traffic line by line and realized I added one or two other things, and then it, then it worked. Mm. Um, so it was interesting, because usually the second you switch to this, as long as you're logged in your IE browser, man, it works, and there's no questions asked, right? It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's great. Um, I, I wish we had a way for doing it with Chrome or with um, some other tools, because it's going to be a shame when this goes away. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. And um, again, with with the right people making some kind of interloops, you can probably reach far enough down to get access to um, to the session or whatever you would call that in, in Chrome. For most of the libraries that I've seen recently to control Chrome or Firefox or whatever are using the debug mode. Right. Which, which seems to be working great, but yeah, there is the issue with having to start the browser with that mode enabled. Yeah. Uh, I saw someone who simply just made the global change on his system where it would always start in that mode. Because, That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So, so it. it makes good sense if you're doing stuff for yourself, but it could be an, an issue right. if you're trying to share it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, well, here we go. This is this is the one you showed me in case anyone cares. Um, but it'll it'll connect to. I think it's all right here. This will connect to the active IE window. Um, oh, it's in here, huh? Yeah. And then uh, and then you can do your post or whatever type of uh, uh, com object request from that actual window. Yeah, it it will it will curry the, um, the the com object or the com interface of of the window, so you have yeah. almost as as good an access as being on page code. So you'll have direct access to the XML HTTP request object of the page. So just like if JavaScript was running on page and it asked for a server resource or something like that, or an image or pulling back a list or whatever it might be, you would be able to act um, almost as if you were the page's own code. So yeah, it, it is really powerful. Um, I didn't actually ever look at this when, um when I was playing with it, and now that I'm looking at it, maybe, maybe this this is actually borrowed right. This, this is the payload um, or body. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But but that isn't. They don't need that, right? That would be tweaked depending on what they're doing. It's it's starting yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With with the O window there and the com object. That's yep. that's the most advanced way I know of actually getting the best or the most the yeah the the window object of the browser page so it, it would be as if if you were using javascript if you use the windows object that's that's what you're kind of doing here yeah and it was um i'll tell you man the what right I, I don't know if you remember 
when you because you mentioned it kind of in passing when we were having a call like this and i'm like what what was the thing you just said mm -hmm. i'm like that is amazing right because um it literally you and you can look at in fiddler too you, it's literally sending the request from your browser window so how on earth would they be able to tell like you're you know you're automating this it, it it's really a phenomenal thing to me um i was actually kind of bummed the other day i was trying to scrape some stuff in uh, in Facebook. And when you load Facebook in IE, it even says like, hey, we're, we're not gonna be supporting this, um, this browser soon. Now that it still may actually, you know, run, but it, it may, you know, who knows what'll happen. And that just made me think about like, you know, I, even if it still lasts because Windows will support it, it doesn't mean all the websites out there will, you know, you can use it. No, and and that's that's always that's already what we are seeing at my job as an example, is that the IE is still the official browser to use, uh -huh. even though support is is pushing Chrome, right? Um, it's still the official thing that's installed on your machine when when you first get it. But most of the stuff that we are now doing, which happens online and, and is in the cloud, so to speak, a few, at least a few of the services that, that we're uh, incorporating won't even load in IE anymore because they're HTML5 and, and use other newer functionality that, that really isn't supported in, uh, in IE, so yeah. And in, in that'll, I'm, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I just don't know as much about this. Um, even if you create like an ActiveX window or anything like that, right, it's not gonna matter, it won't help. No, no, uh, yeah. Cool, okay, well, I thought that was a, a, a fun thing that, um, yeah, the yeah, uh, general approach. Absolutely, and always good of to push some of these things that we have found out over time. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.